traveled to Dallas to visit with Karen James, the widow of 48-year-old Kelly James, the only climber whose body has been recovered. It was found in a snow cave on Mount Hood last Sunday. Kind of a call that you never want to receive. And so we both were acting, and it was like there was nothing wrong. I could tell by his voice that he was in trouble. And I told him I just decorated the Christmas tree and he needed to come home and see it. And he said he would. And I told him I loved him. He told him he loved me and just told him to stay warm and stay awake. He told you he was cold and only had an, half an orange? He told the boys that, that he was cold and he was wet and he was weak. Karen, it was a week between that last cell phone conversation and when Kelly was found. I can't imagine what that week was like for you. Every morning, the only thing I wanted to do was try to save my husband. And from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed and I would talk to him and tell him to hang on, it was all consuming, but I'll tell you, the rescue workers, the sheriff's department, everybody up there. It was the families. It was in the worst of the worst. We saw the best of the best. Karen, when word came that they had found Kelly, what did they tell you? The sheriff came in and said, we have bad news. He said, we have a body. It's deceased. And, um, they were trying to identify, and I said, um, look for Kelly's ring. The rescue worker that came to see Frank, who found Kelly, said that when he walked into the cave, it was so peaceful, and it was so serene, and there was Kelly. He was laying on his side with his head on his back that we've seen a million times when he's been camping. And he had taken off his right glove and he folded every finger back except the, the signature ring and put it out. And he knew and what he wanted to do. He wanted to be identified and he wanted to come home to us. And when we told the kids, they were so proud of him because he had... He was still thinking of us to say, look who I am, and it's time to come home. Is there any part of you that's angry that he did this? I'm not angry. I'm really, I'm really sad our journey is over for a while, and I miss him terribly, but he loved life so much, and he taught me how to love, he taught me how to live, and I don't know how you can be angry at someone who loved their family, who loved God, who had so many friends, and gave back so much more than he took. Kelly had four children when you all got married. Mm -hmm. The kids range from 12 to 25, and Jack's just 12. Kelly loved his kids more than life itself. His kids, the kids are everything to him. And Kelly taught them so much. How do you think Kelly would want people to remember him? Kelly was the biggest optimist you'd ever meet. And Kelly really wanted people to seize the day and live every day to the fullest, love as much as you can, live as much as you can, and appreciate people around you. And he's taught me that, and he's taught the kids that. And 
That's why I kind of feel I hit the lottery of life and men. Because I got to take a journey. And it wasn't long enough. But I got to take a journey with a man who just took me to the moon and back. And I'm very thankful for that. Kelly has this little ornament. And he's had it since he's little. And it's of a manger. And it's just this little plastic thing. And it's always the tradition that um, Jack and Kelly put it on the tree together. And so um, we've already talked to the kids this Christmas. We're going to put that ornament on the tree. And one of the things that um, we really understand about Christmas is that little baby born in a barn is the reason our family has so much strength now. And that is really important to Kelly. It sounds as if your faith was strengthened by this whole ordeal. But it must have been tested, too. You know, it was never tested. And Kelly would say to me, you know, I remember one time we were watching TV, and he said to me, I can't wait to go to heaven. And I said, what? We were watching some show that wasn't relating to it. And he said, you know, that's going to be really cool. And I said, you know, can we, can we hold off? You know, can we, can we wait? But he wasn't scared. And so those conversations are what I hold on to. Is there any lesson for either other climbers or just for people in general from what's happened? I told a friend, a colleague of mine, and I just said, hold your wife really, really tight. Because we don't know when our journey's going to end. And my journey ended with an I love you. And I just, for others, if their journey ends with an I love you, it's a lot to hold on to.